Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how we go about finding the sum Sn of the first n terms of a geometric series. Quite often you'll find you're asked to prove one of these results. So as I say I'll show you how we go about it. So if we take a typical geometric series where the first term is a and the common ratio is r then remember the second term is a r the third term would be a r squared fourth term a r cubed so the nth term would be always one less than the power n so the nth term would be a r to the power n minus one so what I'm going to do then is in order to prove this, we'll just write proof here. We'll let Sn be the sum of the first n terms then of a geometric series. So we'll just say let Sn equal and we'll write out those terms. So first term is A, second term AR, third term AR squared, fourth term then would be AR cubed, and it's going to go on like that all the way through the series until we get to the nth term. Remember the nth term will be plus a r to the power n minus 1. Always one less than the term you're on. So the term before this will be one less than this power. So we'll just write it in here. It will be plus a r to the power n minus 2. Now what I'm going to do is we'll take this equation and I'm going to multiply both sides by the common ratio r. So what we get next is therefore r times sn equals and then we'll get a times r which is a r and then we'll have plus a r squared when we multiply this term by r and I'm going to write each of these underneath the term above. So next one will be AR cubed, then we'll have AR to the power 4 plus and so on. And this is going to go up to this term here. If I multiply this with R, I just add 1 to the power, so I get AR to the power n minus 1. And for the last term here, if I multiply this by r, I again add 1 to the power, and I get a r to the power n. And I'm going to call this equation 2. So what we do next is equation 1 minus equation 2. And what does this give us? Well, we're going to have sn okay, minus r times sn. And it's going to equal, and a nice thing happens now when we look at this, because we see that AR minus this term AR, well, they cancel out to zero. Same happens here. AR squared minus this term just cancels out to zero. And it's going to go on like this, with this term cancelling out with this one. There'll be an AR to the power 4 here, which would cancel out with this one. Um, as we go through the list here, we'll find that this term here would cancel out with the term previously to this one. And this term here cancels out with this one. So in all then, we've got this term, A, and then we'd have nothing here minus this AR to the power N, which would just give us minus AR to the power N. And what I can do next is pull out a common factor of Sn. Sn multiplied with 1 minus r. And on the right hand side here I've got a common factor of a. So it becomes a multiplied by 1 minus r to the power n. And if I divide both sides now here by 1 minus r I get that the sum of the first n terms Sn is equal to a times 1 minus r to the power n all divided by 1 minus r. And that's what we had to show here. Now to, in order to show 
this equation, all I've got to do is just simply take this equation here. Let's just copy it down again and I'll put OR here as an alternative formula. We've got SN equals A times 1 minus R to the power N, all divided by 1 minus R. And what I'm going to do here is multiply top and bottom by the same value. And that same value is minus 1. Remember, multiplying top and bottom by the same value is like multiplying by 1. So it's not going to change this, but it will change the appearance of it. What we get is SN equals, and on the top here, I'm just going to put the A down and multiply this bracket with the minus 1. So I get minus 1 plus R to the power N, which would look a lot better if I just reversed it round. R to the power N minus 1. And underneath here, if I multiply 1 minus R with minus 1, I'm going to get minus 1 plus R, which would look better as written as R minus 1. Now, both of these formulae give you exactly the same answer, whatever the value of R. But if R is a number less than 1, we tend to use this one here, purely because it makes the denominator a positive value. But if R is greater than 1, it's more convenient to use this particular formula because it keeps the denominator here positive. But it's up to you. It doesn't matter. Whichever one of those formulae you use, as I say, it should give you exactly the same answer for the sum of the first n terms, Sn. So I hope that's given you some idea then of how you can go about establishing these particular results.